So when the crime statistics are released by the National Minister of Police annually, there's a lot of data there. The crime reporting itself runs well over 100 pages, and the categories can be quite confusing. There are a range of subcategories, and there are condensed categories. So, for example, the police will release a category called contact crime. Contact crimes refer to all the crimes where there is direct contact between a perpetrator and a victim. These crimes are typically violent or have a threat of violence associated with them and range from murder to common assault, include things like robbery and rape. However, these categories don't really help us because each category has a different level of reliability and validity. And so we tend to focus on the categories that tell us the most about what the current state of security and insecurity is in South Africa. The most reliable crime statistic in this regard is that of murder. So murder is a highly um, reported crime. Most of the murders are reported to the police. We know from the victimization survey undertaken by Stats SA that over 95% of people who know of a murder have reported it to the police. So it's a very reliable crime statistic. And this is the statistic that is usually used to compare violence across countries because of its relative reliability compared to other statistics. South Africa saw a prolonged period of decline in murder from 1994 up until about 2012. The murder rate dropped by 54%. So whereas in 1994, we had as many as 66.9 murders per 100,000 people. By 2012, this is around 30 murders per 100,000 people. So quite a remarkable drop. And that meant that thousands of people that were being murdered uh, in 1994, their lives were not being taken in this way. However, over the last five years, we've seen a worrying shift in this trend. And as you can see from the slide in front of you, between 2012 and the most recent annual crime statistics released in 2016, there was a 19.6% increase in murders. So murders went up from around 15,500 to 18,673 last year. This is roughly around eight more murders every day in South Africa than was the case five years ago. Now, murder is a complex crime in itself or category because it's not, there's not one reason why murders occur. Most murders, around two-thirds, uh, take place in interpersonal social circumstances. They largely involve young men who have been drinking, who get into an argument and a fight which escalates into one of the people killing the other. So that is a very difficult crime for the police to prevent. They typically must respond as soon as they can, ensure that a thorough investigation takes place uh, so that the perpetrators can be brought to book. But in, even in this situation, um, the murder detection rate uh, is just over about a quarter or so, 23 or 24 percent. So most murders don't actually get solved by the police in South Africa, and you might be interested to know in most countries in the world. However, the police can do a lot about murders that are associated with intergroup violence, like gang warfare or taxi warfare, and crimes such as robberies. So around one in five or so murders takes place when an armed robbery occurs, because armed robberies uh, by their very nature, involve an armed perpetrator attacking a person on the streets, invading someone's home, invading a business, typically a small business, ranging all the way to the more planned and high organized crimes such as truck hijacking, cashing transit heists, and bank robberies. But because the perpetrators are usually armed and willing to use force, there is a high risk of injury and murders associated with this crime. So most murders need to be reduced uh, by violence prevention, primary violence prevention programs, which will take a bit longer to see the results of. And that really is not a policing function. And we're doing a lot of work around that, and we'll focus on that in future briefings. But today, we're talking more about what the police can do. What they can do is reduce the aggravated robbery rate. So if we look at what's happening with robberies, we'll see that there's a good correlation between the increase in murder and the increase in robberies. As we can see from this slide, the number of robberies that have occurred or the increase in robbery over the last five years is 31%. That means that robberies went up from about 101,000 robberies uh, in 2012 to a total of 132,527 reported to the police in 2016. 
But that means that there are on average 86 more armed attacks across South Africa every day than there was the case five years ago. And it is probably this dramatic increase in this violent crime that is causing the increase in murders in South Africa. Now, robberies are committed by a relatively small number of people. They might start with petty crimes, move on to street robberies. From there, as soon as they get access to firearms, they'll then start attacking houses, small businesses, uh, and some of the more organized or those connected to crime syndicates will then start going into car hijackings, truck hijackings, and the like. The reason why they do this is because on the streets, you might uh, largely be targeting people who have very few valuables with them as they're walking from a transport node, like a taxi rank or a bus station, train station, on their way to town or work or back. And you might get a cheap cell phone or 50 rand or something like that. But when you attack someone's house, and particularly in wealthier suburbs where people are at home and there might be three or four or five people there, you can get a number of cell phones, jewelry, electronic goods. You might even get firearms. So there's an intention to attack those houses for that purpose. If you don't deal with a street robbery problem, you're going to continue having a feeder problem into other crimes of other types of robbery. So this is something that the police can get on top of. And if you look at the slide, you'll see that um, from 2004 until 2011, the trend was generally downward. Um, we saw a lot of more policing taking place in the earlier periods. And then particularly from 2009 to 2011, that, that very notable drop from about 120,000 to 100,000, that was as a result of a dedicated police strategy in Gauteng, which was focused on robberies using crime intelligence, dedicated detective investigation task teams, and making sure that they were targeting the right people. The rest rates went up by 100% in the first few months of that strategy being implemented, and the conviction rates increased. So it became more risky for people to do this kind of crime. People who were involved in the crime were being uh, increasingly arrested and prosecuted, and that meant that there was a significant drop in the number of robberies. Unfortunately, this strategy was uh, disbanded at the end of 2011, and you can see the result. Robberies started going up again. So that is something the police can and have done something about. So if we look at the impact of these crimes, particularly murder and robbery, we see that feelings of safety in South Africa have declined, quite notably. The top line shows feelings of safety from the latest Victims of Crime survey undertaken by Statistics South Africa have declined um, when people feel safe walking around their areas during the day from 89% to 83%. And you can see say, people feeling safe when it's dark also having declined from 36.9 to 30.7. So with the increase in murders, the increase in robberies on the streets and in people's homes, comes with it a decline in people's feelings of safety. And indeed, the crimes that people typically fear the most are housebreaking, housebreaking robberies, and murder. So if these crimes go up, public safety will uh, deteriorate. Now, the problem with crime statistics generally, and why we must be careful when looking at them, is because they are not reliable indicators of all crimes. And this is important to take note of when we hear the crime statistics being released by the government. So while they're useful as a single indicator and provide us with a sense of what crimes are going up and down in which areas, they're not an accurate, accurate measure of crime in a particular community, province, or indeed nationally. And that is why they should not be used as a measurement or assessment of police performance. Rather, we should be looking at who the police in prosecutions and convictions, for example, or how long it takes the police to respond to a problem uh, when they get called, and, and how they behave on the streets. But I'll get to more, more to that later. But there you can see, if you look at the, um, particularly the blue line, the light blue line, starting around 90% on the left, that is the number of assaults that were reported to the police declining from 2012 to 2015, 2016. And indeed, you'll typically see from the police statistics that uh, the assaults and those kind of conduct crimes, which measure around 350,000 crimes, are declining it's not an actual decline. It suggests from the Victims of Crime Survey that fewer and fewer victims are reporting this crime to the police. Similarly with sexual offences, you can see a big decline there, uh, particularly from 2013-14 to 2015-16, a decline from 67% of victims who said they were a victim of a sexual offence and were reported to the police going all the way down to 35%. So when you see the crime statistics showing declines in those kinds of categories, it suggests 
from this data that they're not real decreases, just that ever larger numbers of victims are simply not reporting this crime to the police and those crimes are not making their way to the official police statistics. So that is why it's not a good idea to rely too heavily on police statistics as a measure of police performance. We know from a presentation in December that for the latest, uh, for the two quarters ending in around October or September 2016, um, that murder had continued to increase by about a percent or just over a percent, and that armed robbery had continued its upward trend with uh, more than a, it was about 6.9 percent. So those two particular crimes are going up, um, whereas you'll see when the crime statistics are probably presented in before Parliament in the next two or three weeks, before the Police Portfolio Committee, that some of the other categories are going down, particularly property crimes. Um, and there again, you can see a decline in theft of personal property. So, what can be done? Well, there are three things when it comes to policing. The first thing that has to happen is that we need to ensure that only the best, most experienced, most qualified men and women whose integrity is beyond reproach are pointed to head the police and the hawks. This has been a huge problem. It has been identified as a key problem by the National Development Plan as far back as 2012, which talks about a serial crisis of management in the police. And we have seen this over and over again through the criminal conviction of uh, former police chief Jackie Salebe, the firing of uh, the following police chief, Beckett Sede, for my administration, uh, the current suspension of Ria Piecha, who is the current police chief for what happened at Marikana, um, those were political appointees who didn't understand policing and therefore could not provide the kinds of guidance and strategic in, uh, direction the police need in order to get on top of the crimes they have a good chance of getting on top of. The second thing is probably for overall improvements in policing in the long term is conduct. Um, when you are in a democracy, you'll see that people don't only just care about what the police do, but how they do it. You certainly see from this slide that the police have been very hard at work over the last few years. Their budgets have increased substantially, they've been more out there, and they've been making more arrests. So you can see from that top line that in the, temp, uh, in the tenure period ending 2015-2016, the arrest rate went up from 1.2 million to 1.6 million. That is a 410,750 more arrests per year um, in 2016 than there were in 2007. However, you can see that the number of cases finalized by the NPA, the National Prosecuting Authority, the bottom uh, line, has declined. So this on result more and more criminal perpetrators going to prison. In fact, the rests are not resulting in very much, except probably a nasty experience for the arrestees, and people have been arrested multiple times and released, and that in itself can lead to a breakdown in community police relations, uh, respect for the law, and a sense um, that people can get away with things and so a bad arrest or mass arrests can in itself be part of a crime problem. So the system needs to work together. And because of the fact that the police are so prevalent and able to intervene with so many people, if you're talking about 1.6 million arrests, how they behave is absolutely crucial. Um, and you can see from various indicators that there are problems here. This slide shows 175 increase in the number of civil claims paid out by the South African Police Service because of uh, judges found that police had pay, behaved badly, arrested people illegally, assaulted people, and you can see that the corresponding satisfaction with the police in this time period has declined. Um, it is a slight uptick in the most recent figure for 2016 for the National Victims of Crime Survey, uh, but overall we see quite a substantial decline there. So, if you really want to improve the ability for the police to improve the rule of law, improve public safety, we can see from this quote. Uh, based on a uh, wide-scale study uh, headed by Lauren Sherman, an internationally recognized police expert for the Department of Justice America, that there was scientific evidence um, supporting the hypothesis that the less respectful police are towards suspects and citizens generally, the less people will comply with the law. And changing the police style may be as focusing on police substance, making the police more legitimate and more able to affect public safety over the longer term.